we have a little bit of an issue with um, the definition of a penetration test. You will find online lots of automated pen test capabilities where you just put an IP address in and out pops the other side of penetration test. Now, we actually feel that we get why that, that is um, a, an agreeable format to use. Um, and we don't want to take anything away from anyone that does that. There's certain elements of Robo Shadow that um, will do that as well. But for us, the difference between a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test is that a penetration test should be adversarial and a human being that is trying to work um, to try and hack you um, around some predefined scope. So the actual predefined scope is where it gets a little bit hazy sometimes, and I'll come back to that in a, in a moment. But ultimately... A vulnerability assessment is a good 70% of what a penetration test in, uh, is effectively. And that is we're going to look at and do some reconnaissance against IPs, machines, just your attack surface in general, work out what is showing up vulnerabilities, um, and then we're going to try and hack it um, as an adversarial force. So to me, um, a vulnerability assessment is, um, especially if you can't afford a penetration test, a vulnerability assessment is... Um, like I say, 70% of the work, but is will get you um, three quarters of the way to really sort of confirming your cybersecurity posture. But for me, it's also the consultancy part that comes with a penetration test. Now, this has its advantages and disadvantages. So a what should happen in a penetration test is that a good pen tester will sit with you and understand your dynamics um, of your organization or what you're looking to protect, are you potentially a nation state um, um, hacking contender? Have you got particular IP, intellectual property that people are after or something like that? Or are you just looking to protect yourself from things like ransomware and just some of the standard nasties um, which happen in the world, which are more and more becoming sort of AI driven? So a penetration tester will then sort of understand the sort of dynamics of your use case, but then kind of look at the common ways that you're likely to get hacked what areas of your attack surface are more likely to want to be compromised. If you've got the best firewalls on your cloud architecture, it's probably less likely to be there. Um, but if you have a distributed workforce that doesn't really have a good um, um, kind of device um, security capability, then it's more likely going to be phishing one of the devices or trying to compromise one of the devices to then um, try and hack the organization um, uh, on larger mass, uh, for want of a better expression. So a good penetration tester will look to do this, kind of work out how much budget that you've got, kind of work out what um, are you looking to certify? So is this for regulators? Are you looking to win a client that requires a certain certification? They will try and sort of nail down what they think that scope should be to try and meet those um, uh, desired effects. Um, but also, also to me, a, a good penetration test should be trying to look at um, the budget and trying to work um, the best for the budget. Now, um, that's a good penetration tester. Now, where we see this, unfortunately, more than what we would like, is that quite often um, a penetration test can be, it was Warren Buffett that said, um, never ask your barber to, if you need a haircut or not. Um, a penetration tester will work with what they're normally like to be working with, i.e. there's a certain set of tools or there's a certain set of scope. They will go after just doing the vulnerability assessment and finding some vulnerabilities. Um, and they will then look to, once they've found the vulnerabilities, they will look to compromise those vulnerabilities. Now, that all sounds good, and granted, um, in quite a lot of um, circumstances, that's going to add a lot of value. But the problem being is, and I do get involved in a couple of battles with pen testers, I'm quite famous um, uh, for having these conversations, is that the simple fact is, if you know something can be exploited because the vulnerability assessment will say, ah, oh, it's this application or this service that's got this criticality, and then a quick Google to that CVE, that vulnerability ID. There's YouTube videos and guides of how to hack these things. It's how the uh, organized crimes will kind of get in once they realize that you've got a vulnerability. Um, and effectively, there's the, the, what we're kind of saying is that there's no point in a penetration test of proving that that vulnerability can be exploited. You know this because it actually says the company that owned that software that said it is vulnerable to this extent. So we see this too much where a penetration tester will spend 
maybe two or three, they'll do the reconnaissance phase and I get that, but then they'll spend two or three days or, you know, four or five days trying to hack sometimes these things that are all be it. There's YouTube videos and guys to do it. Sometimes it takes time to do it. But if you know that the vulnerability can be hacked in the first place, then just take it on good authority from the vendor that owns that software that you need to patch that or you need to update it. So I think that for me is where penetration testing starts to um, take sort of slightly more of a darker side. Uh, we get the point also um, why we need to test if things are exploited. And I get the fact why that might be sold to you by a penetration testing organization. But ultimately, things have moved on in terms of understanding vulnerability management a bit more in general. And there's lots of things like uh, the EPSS score, which is it's an open source capability, which will kind of work out if it's exploitable or not. But then also within the actual um, CV vulnerability that you'll find on MITRE and NIST and the organizations that um, uh, that display uh, the vulnerability information, it will then give you an attack vector. Like, is this needed if you have a certain credential um, um, that can be um, uh, raised? Or is this, um, this can only be done if it's done across a network or something like that. So um, it's very common, unfortunately, that a penetration tester will go and spend the time to actually try and run these exploits when in actual fact, you just need to know they're there 99% of the time, the answer is patch the software or update the software. Um, and if you are really worried before going across, you know, um, 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 sort of sanctioning an exercise of two or three, four days work to actually exploit certain vulnerabilities, you literally can just find out if you think you are susceptible to that uh, um, uh, at all. So that for me is kind of what we say, what is a pen test? Now, we get there's good pen tests, which I think are consultancy driven, are really trying to add lots of value and understand you as a dynamic as an organization. But we do see individuals and some organizations that are literally just looking, give us your IPs, give us your data, we're going to get and we're going to, you know, have a field day um, with what comes back. And they're not necessarily f selling value. Um, and quite often, these types of organizations will be selling on a little bit of fear factor. They're the ones that will try and um, scare you into needing a, um, a managed service with them and stuff like that as well. But to me, um, a penetration test is done as a consultancy process by an adversarial individual that gets to know you, your brand, your organization and what you're trying to protect. I do get the fact that you can have automated penetration tests, um, but largely they are vulnerability management platforms, kind of what RoboShadow is as well. Um, there are automated platforms that will then try and exploit stuff as well. So we'll run sort of known exploits, which you can say is a penetration test. But to me, it is an adversarial individual and it is someone that is going to try and work to a certain set of scope and agree with you what that scope looks like, what you're trying to protect. And they should be asking you if we find vulnerabilities, are you happy that we just we put that in the report and move on? Or do you want us to try and exploit them? So good. I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully that covers um, again, uh, which is quite a gray area, but we get a lot of questions uh, that come up around that subject.